We also heard today that the Department of Home Affairs will also be delaying a decision, and that's the decision on outsourcing Australia's visa processing until next year. Now, I have to tell you, I'm no fan of outsourcing Australia's visa system. It's likely a focus on saving money that's driving it, but I tell you what, I don't know that I would want to put our border security system at risk with a privatised entity. Under the proposal as it stands, the successful project bidder would be paid hundreds of millions of dollars to build and process an online system for visas. Nine million or so people apply for visas to come into Australia and that will all now be outsourced. But the delay follows news that Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Immigration Minister David Coleman had recused themselves from the Expenditure Review Committee, that's the committee that looks at this, because of their personal and professional relationship with someone involved in the project, and that's a guy called Mr Scott Briggs, uh, heavily involved in the Liberal Party of New South Wales. And he's one of the two shortlisted bidders. Joining me now to discuss this and more, columnist for The Advertiser, Caleb Bond, Director of Communications at the Institute of Public Affairs, Evan Mulholland, and writer, Corin Barraclough. I might just start with that visa issue. I don't want to make it too complicated for people to follow at home, but right now visas are processed by the Department of Border Protection, or the old Department of Immigration, but it's the Border Protection Home Affairs area. Uh, and they want to actually outsource this to a private entity who will be paid, I think it's well over a billion dollars, to process the visas on behalf of the government. Now, there's two two entities uh, in the bid. One of them involves Scott Briggs, who's well known to the Prime Minister, a long relationship with him personally, privately, on boards, etc. And he's also known to the other decision maker, the Minister for Immigration, David Coleman. He's part of Australian Visa Processing. It's a consortium of a range of parties. They're up against another proposal from a mob including Accenture and Australia Post. Now, I'm not saying anything untoward with the relationship. The PM and David Coleman are doing the right thing by recusing themselves or removing themselves from the decision making. But Caleb, the principle of outsourcing visas to a private entity, let's start with that. Where are you on that? I've got to say I'm with you, Peter. I mean, uh, I generally believe that the private sector can do things better than government can do it more efficiently and so on and so forth. But, I mean, we are ultimately talking about here who we do or do not allow into this country, whether it be to live or for holidays and so on. And I'm not sure that I'm comfortable that that service uh, should be given to a private entity. Um, I mean, you know, if you end up with a situation where uh, you have a minister who doesn't have uh, a whole load of interest in it, uh, isn't keeping an eye on the contractor, uh, if there is an issue with the contractor, if their systems don't work. I, I don't know. I, I just feel like it is too much risk uh, for the possible benefit to outsource something like your visa system. I mean, of all the things that a government could keep in-house, this seems like one of the ones that would be obvious to keep and not something that could be necessarily done better by the private sector. Yeah, Corin, I yeah. mean, I, I make the point when you have a good minister like Peter Dutton, you think, OK, well, he'll keep it all on tram tracks even if it is privatised. But put your yeah. worst minister in there, dear old Chris Bowen, you know, 300-odd <laughs> boats came on his watch. Imagine if yeah. Chris Bowen was running the system that was privatised. I might also add, which reminds me, Christina Kennelly's husband is advising the department on this issue about the privatisation. Now, there's nothing untoward that. She's in opposition. She can't recuse herself from any decision because she's not in the room in the first place. But it just shows you all the interrelationships of these uh, individuals in what is a really critical decision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, th I think I'm, I'm with you on this, and I know that Labor and the Greens are fiercely opposed to privatising this, and this may well be the one and only time that I actually find something that I agree with them on. Um, it, sounds, it sounds to me as if this has kind of really fallen into the too hard basket. I was reading there are more than 50 different computer systems involved um, in this and two of those are more than 25 years old. So is this a technological problem where the systems are um, obviously hideously out of date, it's all very complicated, it all needs streamlining, it has to be more efficient, there's nine million applicants um, a year uh, so there's obviously a problem with the system as it stands. Does that mean that we can, um, should hand over the reins to an external provider or providers? I, I just don't think so. There has to be a way to keep hold of the reins. And look, Evan, it's interesting. This has not been talked about very much. 
I mean, anyone in business is not interested in putting it into the paper because they'll make millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars out of this. I, I don't know what the impetus of government is to outsource it, other than you know, market economics maybe and some savings. But uh, where do you stand? I tend to think if a private company can, can do it uh, better than government, that they should be given the opportunity uh, when outsourcing to different private firms is often better KPIs and targets you can set in the public service. If something goes wrong in the public service, you can just keep on spending money patching it up. As far as all the connections between uh, people and certain ministers and, not, uh, and, and Christina Keneally, I think that's all just whispering from different uh, industry stakeholders. But the, of course, Labor and the Greens and the public sector unions will get really uh, run a scare campaign about this, just like they did with the Medi scare campaign, where all the government was trying to do was uh, uh, fix up and digitise the back end of, of Medicare. I think there can be mu much more of a streamlined process with, with mm. regards to this, and we shouldn't be afraid of private companies uh, handling uh, processes like this. Yeah, I, I'm being pretty straight with you here. The relationship of Briggs to the Prime Minister and David Coleman is not whispering, it's factual. Uh, I know it personally, the relationships, yeah, yeah. and so uh, that's why the Prime Minister is doing the appropriate thing and David Coleman in recusing themselves. So there's nothing untoward there, there's no probity issues that I can see, it's the principle and I think the lack of community debate about it, which is why I'm talking about it tonight.